What is up, amigos? Today we're talking about the velocity potential function. We'll be going through what it is and how to calculate it and why it is so important, really. So the velocity potential function is really to do with potential flow. And in last week's video, we went through how potential flow is very important and incredibly useful. It really has a massive bang for its buck. So what is the velocity potential? You may have heard this term before. And if you are just starting out in aerodynamics, you might find this quite intimidating, which I did find when I was starting out as well. But it's actually very simple. So to give you an idea, let's say we have a flow. We have a flow like this just going along. And we want to know what the velocity at any point in this flow is. Is it possible to do that? Well, in a regular flow, which has viscosity and is not irritational, then it's a bit more difficult. You need to use the Navier-Stokes equations. But if we assume that the flow is irritational, which means that there is no, vis uh, no vorticity in it, then it is actually very simple. We use the velocity potential. And the velocity potential is really just this equation here. The velocity vector in the x, y, and z directions equals nabla times uh, nabla with the phi. Phi is the Greek letter, which represents the velocity field, the velocity potential. So what this means is from phi, if we partially differentiate it in the three orthogonal directions in the x, y, and z, we can then get the velocities in those directions, u, v, and w. So that's really what the velocity potential is. It's that simple. That means anywhere we go in this velocity field, if we know what its coordinates are and we know what the velocity potential field is, phi, we can then just decompose this into u, v, w by taking the partial differentials in the three orthogonal velocities, in three orthogonal directions. So that is what it is and how to calculate it. But let's go through if we didn't know what it was. So let's say we actually knew what the velocities were and we're trying to work backwards to find out what it is. Then we can apply this velocity potential field to other points. So at the moment, it's quite easy to find what the velocities are. Let's go the other way. So let's say we have point one here. And at point one, I have measured the u velocity to be three meters per second and the v velocity to be two meters per second. And this is just a two dimensional flow. If it was three dimensions, it would be very easy. You just put in the uh, w velocity here and go through the exact same process that we'll go through in a second. So what we have here is u, which equals the partial differential of phi divided by partial differential of the partial differential of x equals three meters per second. So if we were to integrate this with respect to x, we would get phi equals 3x plus some function of y. And if you had the z component, then it would be some function of z as well. But we don't need that because it's just two dimensions. Now, in terms of v, we know v equals the partial differential of phi in the y direction. And that equals 2 meters per second. So if we were to integrate this with respect to y, we would then have phi equals some function of x plus 2y. Now, it's interesting that we have the exact same function phi, but we have different right-hand sides. They are the same function, they should equal each other. And knowing that actually results in it being very simple to calculate what f of y is and what g of x is. Because we know that phi here equals phi here. Therefore, 3x plus f of y equals g of x plus 2y. Therefore, f of y has to equal 2y, and 3 of x has to equal g of x. Therefore, phi equals 3x plus 2y. Now, that is the velocity potential field. And that means anywhere we go in this potential field, if we know what the x and y components are, the, the coordinates, we can then find the velocity quite easy by plugging it into this equation and differentiating so, um, respectively. And if we had the x component, we'll just do the exact same thing with the third um, equation as well and get the x component. So that is the velocity potential and how we use it. It's very powerful for potential flows. Now, we went through a very simple example here and you might be thinking, well, what if we have an object in the way? How do we calculate the velocity potential around that? Well, it's still very simple. It's the same way as this, but now we start to introduce things called sources, sinks, doublets, that kind of thing. If you don't know what these are, don't worry. In the next few weeks, we'll be going through what they are and then how to integrate them together. So that is the velocity potential, what it is and how to calculate it. If you like this video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button and I'll see you next one. Peace amigos.